Today I want to give you seven tips on how you can plan a landscape and travel photography trip. Inspiration is always going to be the first factor in any planning of a landscape and travel photography trip. We might see images from other people or we see them on the internet, in newspapers, magazines, books, or for example with myself, when I'm very often out, I get talking to people and people say to me, hey, did you know about this place? And I was just thinking, well, no, where's that? Or maybe I do know about it, but don't know exactly where it might be. So for an example is that I was in the city of Florence a few years ago. I was stood at a place called the Piazza di Michelangelo. It's a famous viewpoint that overlooks the city. It's beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful viewpoint of the city of Florence. This guy was talking to me and he said, you know what? You should go to the city of Salamanca in Western Spain. It's beautiful. And it's like, okay. So I just stood there, Googled Salamanca and thought, yeah, I have to go there. Two months later, I visited Salamanca. I had planned my trip, seen photos and thought, I am going there. It is beautiful. So just be inspired and then let's go into the next tip of what it is you can do to plan a landscape photography trip. After inspiration comes research. When you've got inspired to go somewhere, start researching it. Look at the tourism office, for example, of the particular place that you're going to or the region or in, like in France, for example, the department. Start drilling down, start thinking, what else is here? Is this the only thing that's worth doing? Or are there other things around? Places like Flickr, Instagram, 500px, those are all great places where you can start to do more research to see what else is around. So it's not just a case of going, I want to go there just because that's there. Yes, that's fine, but maybe there's other places as well that are just as good within the vicinity. So definitely get out there. I'll give you a quick example, actually. There's a place in Burgundy called Vesley, beautiful, beautiful hilltop village. Just at the bottom of Vesley, there is a tiny village called Saint-Père. In the village of Saint-Père is the most stunning Gothic church you will ever see. It is a masterpiece and is considered a masterpiece of Gothic architecture. How do I know it's there? Research, that's why. So don't forget to do your research before you plan any landscape or travel photography trip. The third tip that I want to give you in planning a landscape or travel photography trip is mapping. Mapping is extremely important. So for example, in the United Kingdom, if you're a walker, you'll know the Ordnance Survey maps or here in France, for example, there's the IGN maps. In Italy, I think it's tobacco, I think it is something like that, the mapping that's there. I can put links in the description of this particular video. So they are the, like the one to 25,000 maps that you should be using when you really want to get very detailed on a particular place that you want to photograph. Other things that you can use, of course, are Bing Maps. So if you go to Bing Maps, what you can do is actually find the Ordnance Survey mapping data online. IGN, they have their own mapping system online as well that's free to use. It's Geo Portal, I think it is, something like that. But again, I can put links in the description. And then, of course, good old Google Maps that you can look at. Now, Google Maps, of course, what you can do is you can look at the, the street view and you can start to get a good idea of what it is that's around, places to park and stuff like that. So that's actually really useful, Google Maps as a tool. One of the other things that I want to mention to you that you should learn is actually learning to read the contours on the map as well so that you know when you're going somewhere if you're going to have a hard time getting to there because it might be an uneven path, it might look like an uneven path, a very steep path. So you might think in the morning, you're going, oh, that's easy, I'm going to go there and it's going to take me 10 minutes. When in reality, you've got like a 45 degree incline, huff and a puff with 15 kilos of camera gear and a tripod. So always look, always plan with the maps. That's your next step that you want to do when it comes to planning your landscape or travel photography trip. The photographer's ephemeris. It goes without saying, it's a tool that we've all become used to. If you're new to photography though and you're not sure what it is, definitely go and Google it 
or again, I'll put a link in the description below this video as to why you should use it. It is an amazing tool that has been there for a few years now for us photographers. To be able to go to anywhere in the world, to be able to put a pin on the map at any time of year and to be able to know when the sunrise, sunset time is, to be able to know the direction that the light is coming from is invaluable to any landscape or travel photographer. So for example, if I'm out and about and I think, right, I'd love to photograph this particular building in a city somewhere, and you just think, well, what's the best time of day? When's the sun going to be illuminating that part of the building? You can see immediately with the photographer's ephemeris when it is that you're going to be able to get your shot. And of course, the photographer's ephemeris does also actually have a mobile phone application. So download it onto your smartphone and use it when you're out in the field. It's an invaluable tool for those of us that are out there working in the field doing landscape and travel photography. The fifth tip that I want to give you is to plan your route out. It goes without saying you must plan your route going from your home to your chosen destination, be it dawn or sunrise or wherever it is that you're going, even throughout the day. You just never know when you leave your house if you're going to come up against roadworks, things like this that are just going to hinder you getting you to your destination. And even once you've got to your destination, can you actually park where it is that you want to go? Is there enough parking spaces? Is there a fee? Do you have to pay some kind of toll to get there? Will, will things be open? All sorts of things are going to hinder you to get from A to B. What will happen will happen. And if you don't plan, then you'll see how quickly your plans go completely out of the window by not planning things correctly. One of the excellent tools that I use that I'm able to plan on my home computer and then put onto my smartphone is Google Maps. Now I've mentioned Google Maps in a previous tip. However, I use Google My Maps to start pinning locations and saying, I want to go there. That's going to be my sunrise destination. That's going to be sunset destination. And I want to go at these other places in between times. And so I start planning things. And then I also have backup plans. So if, for example, you go somewhere and things don't work out, then you can go, right, that didn't work. Where's near here that could work? And so you can very quickly change things because you've planned. So Google My Maps is an excellent tool in order to help you with your planning when you're getting out there for any landscape or travel photography trip. Tip number six is, of course, the weather. Of course, the weather is going to hinder or break and make a photograph, whatever. So we know what it's like with the weather service. You look, for example, here in France, La Chaine Meteo or AccuWeather in the United Kingdom, the Met Office, and you just think, what is going on with this? Just is it going to do what it is that they say it's going to do or is it not? The amount of times that I've been on site and they've said at that particular point when I've looked even on my phone, they say, oh, it's going to be beautiful weather. And you look in the sky, you just think, but it's grey, it's cloudy, nothing is there. What on earth are they doing? Where on earth are they getting their data from? Now, I have recently found an app called Clear Outside, which actually is an amazing app that you can download, on, download onto your smartphone. It's free and it's perfect. It really is pretty much on the nail every single time that I've been looking at it if I think I'm going to have a problem when I'm actually already out and about. But definitely before you go out on your landscape or travel photography trip, make sure to check the weather. I know it sounds simple, but very often people just don't, they just go. But definitely check the weather and also have a plan B as well. So for example, if the weather isn't great in destination A, then you can hopefully change to another destination. So definitely this is why all the planning comes in beforehand, like your Google Maps, and stuff like this, make sure you know where you're going, make sure that you've got a backup plan as well. So a bit of a bonus tip in there is make sure you've got a bit of a, a backup plan too, because otherwise things will go out the window very, very quickly. The seventh and final tip that I want to give you is gear. It goes without saying, without our gear, we're not going to be able to do our landscape and travel photography. But how do you plan your gear? Well, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. So for example, if you go on to, I think 500px shows this, but certainly Flickr, if you go on there and you think, wow, I like that view, that 
person that, that uh, has taken that particular photograph there, a lot of the time people actually leave the EXIF data on Flickr. So you can see what camera they've used and you can see the focal length. And what that will do is it will allow you and enable you to help you choose which lenses you're going to take. Typically, I just take everything, but that's just me. But if you want to go, for example, on a long hike and you don't want 15 kilos of camera gear, you can go, right, do I just take a 2470 and 100 to 400 and an extender? And that's me done. Pretty much, you could probably get away with that on most landscape and travel photography trips. But it is a good way of just sort of pre-planning and pre-visualizing what it is that you want to be able to do and how much gear you're going to have to carry. So definitely do that. And of course, it goes without saying, make sure before you go out anywhere with your gear on any landscape or travel photography trip, make sure you charge your batteries. So there you go, there's seven tips to help you plan a landscape and photography trip. Use them wisely. So they are useful and sometimes people do forget to do these types of things. But hopefully it's given you a little bit of motivation to think, actually, we can get out there when we can get out there to actually plan things and think, where can I go? So I mind like doing that all the time. I'm always planning things, always finding things. So for example, yesterday I saw a picture in Scotland of a place I've heard about and actually managed to find it. So I'm just thinking at some point I will get there when I don't know, but I will get there and I will go and find where this particular beautiful little spot is. It's actually quite hidden. But uh, in any case, if you've liked what it is that you've seen, don't forget to subscribe down there, hit the notification bell up there, and see you again on the next vlog, wherever that might be. And don't forget, just stay safe wherever you are. Till the next time, see you again soon.